Hello, my name is Christian Arteaga. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and today I will be teaching on the uniqueness of Christ in response to the Jehovah Witness religion. So I grew up Catholic, and in our household, we worship Jesus as our Lord and Savior. In our community, we would engage with a lot of Jehovah Witness because they would come knocking on our door. And as a kid, I was very curious why they would come talk to us about Jesus when we knew Jesus. So one day our parents told us to be very careful with the Jehovah Witness because they taught a very different Jesus than the one we believe. One day during high school, my friends and I were speaking to the Jehovah Witness about salvation and death. And it was in this moment that I knew that this was a very different gospel than the one I once heard before. The older I became and the more I gave my life to Christ, the more I understood the true identity of who he was. I would engage with a lot of Jehovah Witness in my community because we would be in the same places talking to people about Jesus. And it was in this and it was in these moments where I learned more about the religion and what they be, what they believed about Jesus. So what do they what do the Jehovah Witness believe about Christ? They believe that Jesus is so is not God and they believe that Jesus is only the son of God. And when it comes to creation, they believe that God created Jesus and then Jesus created all things. They also believe that Jesus was an angel. They believe that Jesus is actually Michael the archangel. Jehovah Witnesses do not believe in the Godhead, which states that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. When speaking to the Jehovah Witness, we must understand and address the specific audience. Addressing the specific audience is important because it speaks directly to the revelation that they have about God. Addressing the specific audience is important when speaking to the Jehovah Witness because they created and believe in a doctrine that does not teach the true nature of who Jesus is. McGrath writes, we need to show the same ability and take the trouble to to relate to the unchanging gospel according to the very different needs of the groups to whom we will once speak to. Peter and Paul gave us a great Peter and Paul gave us great apologetic principles when addressing the specific audience. For example, when Peter was speaking to the Jews, he knew their culture setting and he also knew the concern that they might have about the identity of Jesus. So what Peter did is that he used the, the prophecies from the Old Testament to point people to Jesus and also to reveal the identity of Jesus as the Lord and the Messiah. And Paul, on the other hand, he, ad he addressed the, the specific audience, which were the Greeks, and he addressed them in a different way to show them that uniqueness of Christ, to reveal to them that salvation comes through Christ and Christ alone. So these are two very different approaches the way Peter and Paul address their own specific audience. Paul, when he addresses the Greeks in Romans chapter 3, verse 22 to 24 says, His righteousness is given through faith in him to all who believe in Jesus Christ. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and all fall short, fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by the grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. So we see here that Peter and Paul shared the gospel of Jesus Christ in a specific way that spoke directly to their specific audience. The way that Peter and Paul shared the gospel might not be the most effective way on how to share the gospel with the Jehovah Witness. Addressing the Jehovah Witness is a challenge because their worldview, in their worldview, they actually believe in Christ. But the reason why this is a challenge is because they believe in salvation in Christ, but they don't fully believe in the true identity of Christ. They do not believe that Jesus is God himself, and they do not believe that Jesus is God in human form. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a verse that clearly communicates that that Jesus is God. So John 1 chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 says, "In the beginning 
was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made, and without Him, nothing, that, nothing was made that was made. This verse clearly communicates that the Word of God was in the beginning. And this is extremely important because even when we go down even further on verse 14, it reveals to us who the word was. On verse 14, it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. The word became flesh is a clear illustration that Jesus is the one who became flesh and dwelled amongst us. So this is how we know that Jesus was God because he was God in the beginning and the word says that that the word became flesh. So the flesh meant, meant Jesus. Jesus was in the beginning. And the second point that this verse says, it says, Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. This verse also clearly communicates that, that Jesus was not created by God. It states that through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. This is important to know. Because the Jehovah Witness doctrine teaches that Jesus, who is Michael the Archangel, was actually created by God. Guzik writes, Jewish rabbis often refer to God, especially in his more personal aspects, in terms of his word. They spoke of God himself as, quote, the word of God. For example, ancient Hebrew editions of Old Testament change, Exodus 9, 7, 19, 17, it says, Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. And they then they change it to, Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet the word of God. In the mind of ancient Jews, the phrase word of God could also be used to refer to God himself. So what does this mean? This means that the word of God teaches those who put their faith in Jesus will receive salvation. Jesus is the only way to salvation, and whoever rejects the true identity of, of Christ will not be saved. There are many religions like the Jehovah Witness uh, religion who believes in Jesus but does not believe in the true identity of who he is. The Word of God teaches that those who do not believe in the true nature of God will not inherit eternal life. The true identity of Christ is found in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is one God in three persons. Thank you so much for letting me share.